Hi guys, so today we're going to continue our work with area and volume, but I suppose um, we're going to look at uh, much more difficult questions. So definitely higher level questions for junior cert. Um, so I suppose just to remind ourselves of what we know already, we know that um, this is a circle and we know that we don't actually call it perimeter, we call it circumference. So circumference of a circle is 2 pi r and the area is equal to pi r squared. Obviously this is a rectangle, so it is our perimeter is equal to twice the length plus twice the width, and our area is equal to length by width. This is a square, so our perimeter equals, if this is one L, it, perimeter equals four times L, and area is equal to length by length or L squared. This is a triangle, so our perimeter is obviously just the three sides added up. Um, but our area of a, of a triangle is equal to base times perpendicular height all over 2. So to just make sure that if we were asked for the area of this triangle, and we knew that the base here was 10, we would need to find this, the perpendicular height, because these other two parts of the triangle, if I know them, say 7 and 4, it doesn't help me figure out the height. So, you know, perpendicular height over 2 is how we find area. And the last thing that we've been looking at is this uh, last piece of information, which is a right angle triangle. So right angle triangles, obviously area and perimeter is the same as this type of triangle. But we remember that with right angle triangles, we have C squared equals A squared plus B squared. And that's our Pythagoras' theorem. And that might, we might need that to figure out the length of a side. Okay, any of these sides. All right, so we're going to look at more difficult questions uh, that come up with regards using all of these properties. So example one I have here and it says, find the radius of a circle with circumference of 24 pi and area of 16 pi centimeters squared. So we can see here they've given the correct units. Um, but for me, first of all, I would definitely, with any of these, if we're dealing with area and volume, I would try and visualize it. So I'm drawing myself a little circle here. Now, I know that the circumference is if I was to walk around this circle here. So circumference, I am given a formula for, and it is 2 pi r. So um, I'm told in this question that the circumference is 24. So like everything, we follow two main steps. So hopefully you've recognized the first one. Step one, write down the formula. So I've done that, circumference equals two pi r. Step two, you should know it at this stage. Fill in what you know. So we know that the circumference is equal to two pi r. That's our formula. But we, know, we have an answer for circumference. So circumference is actually 24 pi equals 2 pi r. Now remember this question asks me to find the radius, which basically means I want r on one side, everything else on the other. Now, um, we're going to do a little bit of algebra here and hopefully it'll make a sense to uh, you from previous times. So we want r on our own here, okay? We basically want r equals, or in this case equals r. So whatever the answer is equals r. So the first thing I'm going to get rid of here, the first thing I'm going to separate, obviously we see it's all joined together here, which means it's really two multiplied by pi multiplied by r. So I would love to get rid of this two multiplied. The only way I can get rid of a two multiplied is by dividing. So what I do to one side, I do to the other. Now you can spot here that my divide by two and my multiply by two cancel. And what am I left with here? I'm left with 24 divided by two, so it's gonna give me 12 pi equals pi r. Again, I'm looking to get r on one side, everything else on the other. I'd love to get rid of this pi. You can see it's stuck to the r, which means it's multiplied by. So I could actually divide by pi on this side. That would cancel those out. But what I do to one side, I must do to the other. And you'll notice that you can cancel those out and you're gonna get 12 equals r. So a lot of people, when they're doing these questions, uh, so if I was to go back to the start and we have 24 pi equals two pi or a lot of people they'll notice well if you've got pi on both sides you can actually just cancel them out and that's correct if you've got one thing on each side and they're both the same so this is a multiplied by pi and this is a multiplied by pi so if they're both the same you can cancel them out so it would be very similar to if we had a plus five and a minus five 
sorry, a plus five and a plus five on both sides because they're the exact same and they would actually cancel. So a little bit of a, a trick if you're able to spot that. Right, so I've done the first part there. I have found what the radius is. And the second one, so part B, it says the area is equal to 16 pi centimeters squared. And what are we asked for here, guys? We're asked to find the radius, find or. So step one, write down your formula. So my formula for a area of a circle is pi or squared. Uh, step two, fill in what you know. So I know the area is equal to 16 pi. Now, we want to find out what the radius is. Um, like what I explained up here, we might use this now. So I've got pi on either side. Remember I want or, which basically means I want or on one side, everything else on the other. But I've got a multiply by pi on this side and a multiply by pi on that side. So they will cancel. That will give me or squared equals 16. Now, I obviously don't want or squared, I just want to find or. So how do I get rid of a square here? So a really important rule is that you square root both sides. So your square and your square root cancel and you're left with or equals. The square root of 16 is going to be four, but it actually, I suppose it's important that we recognize it actually gives you two answers. It could be four or it could be minus four. They're the two answers it actually gives you. The reason for that is four times four gives you 16, but also minus four times minus four gives you 16. So that's why there's two answers. But of course we're dealing with area. And when we're dealing with length, distance, area, perimeter, we can never have a negative answer, okay? So that's why we will only take the answer as four. But as we move on in maths, you know, that won't necessarily always be the case with different questions. So it's important that you recognize that you might get um, two answers, but if we're dealing with distance, area, length, anything like that, we'll only be taking the positive. Okay, this next question then, it looks a little bit different. The diagram below shows a rectangle P, Q, or S. P, Q, or S. The sides P to Q, so that's P to Q, and R to S are divided into six equal parts. So I think we can see the little lines here, one, two, three, four, five, and then obviously this one will be six. Some of the endpoints of these parts are joined by line segments. Okay, so we've got a couple of line segments. Find the percentage of the area P, Q, or S that is shaded. Okay, well, if I told you to find the area that's shaded, I presume you would first of all find the total area of this shape, maybe find the area of this shape and subtract them. And that's what we're going to do, okay? So um, we need to try and figure out what lengths do we know. Okay, am I told any information here as regards what is the length or the width? What do you think? Am I told any information? I'm actually not, okay? So I've got to, I suppose, mark these with what I know. So we know that these are each divided into little segments here. So I'm going to call this first segment here X, okay? Because I don't know what it's actually going to be. And then obviously I know that this is another X and this is another X and this is another X. This is another x and this is another x so i'm happy enough with that but then i don't know what this length here is so again something i don't know i'm going to call a letter so i'm going to call that letter y so then this is obviously y as well now to find the area of the shaded region i would as i said find the area of the whole thing then subtract it uh, from the area of the shaded of maybe the white region and then i'd find the shaded region okay that's how i would do it but if I look at um, the area of the whole thing, well, I could actually probably find it easily enough. Uh, it's going to be length, the area of the whole rectangle. Let me draw a little rectangle here so we can visualize it. So the area of the whole rectangle. So we're happy with that this is y, the length here or the width here is y. And then what is the length up here? So x, two, three, four, five, six. It's going to be six x. Okay, so what is the area of the whole thing? It's 6x multiplied by y. I'm going to just put it in brackets. And I want you to write down the answer for me now. Hopefully, when you multiply, you're getting 6xy. You can also get 6yx, okay? But normally we write them in alphabetical order. 
okay, so 6xy. So that's the area of the whole thing. Uh, now we need to find the area of the shaded region here. Right, so um, I'm going to obviously look at this shaded region here. And when you look at it, hopefully you're saying to yourself, well, that is not a shape, okay? However, I, I know circles, squares, rectangles, triangles. Can I make that out of any of these? And I think you can find that you can. That if I was to drop a line down here, I would have two shapes. One would be a rectangle and the other would be a triangle. And I suppose not any triangle, a right angle triangle. So if that's the case, I'm gonna find the area of the rectangle first, and it's length by width, x by y, so it's going to give me uh, x multiplied by y, that's going to give me xy, okay? And the next thing I'm going to find the area of is the triangle. So remember, area of a triangle is base, times perpendicular height, where your 90 degree angle is. So my base here is x, 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 so I've got three x here, and then my perpendicular height is y, and it's all over two. So it's remember, it's base times perpendicular height all over two, which is going to give me three x times y all over two. Okay, so I can do a little bit of cleaning up on that. That's gonna give me three x, y, divided by two. So three xy divided by two is going to give me one and a half xy, because three divided by two is one and a half, so one and a half xy. Okay, so I now know that the area of this section here is xy plus one and a half xy, which is going to give me, uh, remember that's one xy, isn't it? So one xy plus one and a half xy gives me two and a half xy. That is the area of that section there, right? I now need to find the area of this shaded part here. So I'm gonna drop a line down and hopefully you'll notice that we have two shapes now. We have a triangle and we have a rectangle. So again, I'm gonna do this again. You can see the triangle here is much thinner, uh, but uh, we can still fill in parts here. So I have from here to here is the base, but obviously it's the same as from there to there. So that's going to be X. So I have an x here and I just need the perpendicular height, which I know is this here, which is y. So area of a triangle is base times perpendicular height all over two. So my base is x, my perpendicular height is y all over two. And that's going to give, remember that's one xy, it's going, so it's going to give me a half xy, okay? So I have that and then I have this bit here, which is the rectangle, which is the same as this one here. So I have it again, uh, the rectangle. So I have X and Y, which gives me XY. So the total area of that is a half XY plus one XY, which is going to give me um, one and a half XY. So I'm gonna color that bit in blue. Oh, sorry, oops, blue. Right, so I know that the green bit is two and a half XY, I know that the blue bit is one and a half xy. So the total shaded region, you can do it in your head, one and a half xy plus two and a half xy is going to give me four xy. Okay, you add those together. You can do it, I can write it down if you're still not sure. So one and a half xy plus two and a half xy you're adding, they're the exact same, so you're gonna get four xy. Now the question said, what percentage of the area is PQ or S? It didn't say what is PQ or S. So remember percentage, if you get a percentage in a test, uh, if you get say 13 out of 17, and I asked you to find the percentage, remember 13 is what you got, divided by 17 is the total. And how do you find a percentage? you multiply it by 100, okay? That's what you would do. So here, the shaded region is 4xy, the total is 6xy, and we have to multiply that by 100. Now, what do we notice here? We know this is a four multiplied by a x, multiplied by y, divided by six, multiplied by x, multiplied by y. So this is a division. So this is an x multiply, and this is a divide by x. 
So my multiply by x and my divide by x, they cancel. My multiply by y, my divide by y cancel. And I'm left with 4 over 6 multiplied by 100. And if you type that into your calculator, I think you're going to get uh, 2 thirds multiplied by 100, which is, does it say to one decimal place or anything? No. So we'll go with 66.66%. You can check it on your calculator. Make sure you're getting what I'm getting here. So you can see here we've taken a big step up now. We're doing area and volume. What are we doing? We're just doing area of rectangles, area of, of triangles, but we've brought our element of algebra into it. So I want you to take down these two questions and I want you to try the next question as your learning check. Okay, so this is your learning check. I'm going to create, if you're on Schoology, I'm going to create a little quiz where you can input your two answers to these. Um, and I'm going to say put it to two decimal places. So I, I don't know what the answers are, but if it is, it, it's going to be to two decimal places. And um, just remember, because I just seen with the last quiz that a lot of people were getting it wrong. So if you have like say 3.579, that to two decimal places is 3.58. So just be careful, okay? All right. Okay, so on that guys.